rice weevils that we get. But we do know that the Kaya bowl, the active is delta methrin, it's been around for you know 30 odd years. So it's not a new active, whereas the spinosad and the Dow product and the conserve is a new active. So you know the resistance profile is at the moment not the you know there'd be some that would be resistant but bugger all. But we do know there is resistance to the carbol currently out there. Not very widespread, but it is definitely out there and it's at low levels. So again it's that thing of one of the problems we have with protectants particularly is um, you know, the buggers get resistant to them relatively quickly. And one of the reasons is that it's where having two new actors, well, one totally new, one relatively new in the on-farm sector, is that we can do, as Rick said, we can mix up, we can do that resistance management type of stuff that we used to do. Whereas previously when we just had Reldan or Phoenicia Fine and mixed it with IGR, IGR was the only thing we were using for the lesser grain boys. So of course, it's only going to fall over sooner rather than later because that's all we use. So that's one of the things to think about. And again, for me, it becomes that thing of the long term game. You know, as I said, it's, it really will be about moving away from protectants because car bowl, I reckon, in five years, we'll open that one up. And just because it'll just happen anyway because we've got that resistance. So it's, like I said, it's been there for 20, 30 years. The volcanoes have been using it for the last 30 years. Does anyone remember a product called Biorismethrin or BRM? Is it protected? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That was synthetic pyrethroid, like what Delta Methrin is, Kobi. Do you know why we lost the use of that? Because you, do you remember it just suddenly disappeared? Basically, it was found in meat as a residue of meat product over in Japan or Korea. You guys got fingered for it. Whether you actually were the ones that did it to the grain, I wouldn't believe the bulk handlers if they had their hand on the Bible, but you, you guys wore it. So again, it's that thing of using them well, and <coughs> that stuff records is really important. But um, again, the thing with a sealed silo is you don't have an issue with residues if you use it properly. The really good thing about them too is that when I, let's say that was a sealed silo that I was going to fumigate, on that silo there will be a little plate or you ring up the manufacturer which will tell me the volume of the silo, so how many cubic metres it is. That's my calibration. I know how many tablets or how many bag chains I've got to pull in, put into that silo every time I fumigate. It doesn't matter how much grain's in there, it's about the space. So 200 tablets have to go in there because that equates back to the the label rate for you know for for dosing it that's how much I put in every time with the two new products it's really important that we um, that we apply them really accurately because they're both very persistent chemicals they don't break down very quickly and so Tony would remember the wonderful online training thing you would have done to do it or you might have done it as a group with a